Welcome back. So we're talking about the singular value decomposition, which is one of the most useful matrix decompositions in numerical linear algebra. And right now I'm gonna walk you through how it's computed and how it's interpreted in terms of a data matrix X. So we're gonna start with the data matrix X, which I'm going to define as a collection of column vectors, X1, X2, so on and so forth up to Xm. And so the way I think about this, I'm going to give you a couple of examples of where this matrix X could come from. Uh, for example, I could take a bunch of pictures of, of people's faces. So I could take person one, and I could reshape that face into a tall, skinny column vector X1. So let's say this is a megapixel image. Then I would reshape that into a million by one column vector X1. So that's person one. I could do the same thing for person two and reshape them into a tall, skinny X vector, and so on and so forth uh, up to XM. So let's say I have M people, I can get these M column vectors. Uh, and in this case, I'm gonna say that XK is in RN, where N is the dimension of my measurement. So in this case of a megapixel image, N would be a million dimensions, a million by one vector, these reshaped X vectors. And I might have M of them, where M might be, you know, a thousand people's faces. So a thousand columns, each column has a million pixels, N equals a million, okay? Um, another example of this data matrix could be, um, I'll draw it, just draw it again. Another example I think about a lot is if these vectors X come from some physical system, some uh, real world system in science or engineering. So for example, uh, maybe I have a fluid flow. I have uh, some fluid flow past a circle and I get this nice Karman vortex street that we're used to seeing. And maybe I have this flow field as it evolves in time. Okay, and again, what I can do is I can take this first snapshot and I can reshape that into a tall, skinny vector X1, the second snapshot in time, so this is X1, X2, dot, 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 up to Xm. And so in this case uh, of a physical system, now the columns have the additional interpretation that they are the, the state of the system as it evolves in time. Okay, so there's lots of ways you can build a data matrix from either a library of human faces or from a flow field that's evolving in time or some other physical process that you're measuring that's evolving in time. And so what the singular value decomposition is going to allow us to do is take this matrix X and decompose it or represent it as the product of three other matrices. Okay, we're gonna have this equals U times sigma times V transpose, okay? And I'm gonna tell you all about these matrices over the next few videos. I'm gonna give you what they mean, how to compute them, uh, and how they're useful for approximating this matrix X. The things I wanna tell you right now is that the U matrix and the V matrix are what are called unitary matrices or orthogonal matrices, and sigma is a diagonal matrix. So I'm gonna write this out in kind of matrix form again, where we have U1, u2 dot 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 all the way up to un. This is an n by n square matrix times this sigma matrix. Um, and the sigma matrix is diagonal, so I have sigma 1, sigma 2 dot 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 dot. Now because there are only m columns of x, there will only be m non-zero singular values and everything else below will be zero. I'll explain this more in a bit. And then the last matrix is this V matrix, V1, V2, dot, 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 Vm, transposed, okay? So we're taking our, our data matrix X and we're representing it as the product of U times sigma times V, where these each have very uh, intuitive and physical interpretations of what these columns uh, of U and V mean and what the entries of sigma mean. Okay, so a few things um, that are important to note. These, um, these columns of U are kind of, they have the same shape as a column of X. So if X is a million by one vector, then the columns of U are million by one vectors. And the way I think about these, these are, in some sense in this face example, these would be my eigen 
my eigenfaces. These are hierarchically arranged, so u1 is somehow more important than u2, and so on and so forth, in terms of their ability to describe the variance in the columns of x. So in the case of faces, these are eigenfaces. In the case of flow fields, they're eigenflow fields. And they give me a basis where I can represent each column of my original data matrix X. Okay. So a couple of things I need to point out. Uh, so U and V are unitary. And essentially what that means is that U transpose U equals the identity. And so does U U transpose. Okay, so it's this, so this matrix U, uh, the columns are orthonormal, so they're all orthogonal and have unit length, and they provide a complete basis for all of Rn, for this n-dimensional subspace, or this n-dimensional vector space where the columns of my data live. Okay, so you have this property that U is orthogonal, and so its transpose is its inverse. Same thing with V, V, V transpose equals V transpose V equals the identity matrix. This one is an N by N. This one is an M by M, okay? So that's important. The other important thing to note is that sigma is diagonal, which I've already described here, and it's non-negative and hierarchically ordered, so it's in decreasing magnitude. So sigma 1 is greater than or equal to sigma 2 is greater than or equal to sigma three and so on and so forth is greater than or equal to sigma m, which is again greater than or equal to zero. So they're all non-negative. Some of them could be zero, but sigma one is always greater than or equal to sigma two, is greater than or equal to sigma three, and so on and so forth, okay? So what this means is that the first column of u corresponding to sigma one and the first column of v corresponding to sigma one are somehow more important than the second columns, and those are more important than the third columns, and so on and so forth, in describing the information in the data matrix X. And the relative importance of these, uh, of, of these columns of U and columns of V are given by the corresponding singular value. So that's what we call these. Uh, we call the U matrix the left singular vectors. We call V the right singular vectors. And we call this uh, diagonal matrix sigma a matrix of singular values. So each of these sigmas is a singular value of x corresponding to the singular vector u and the singular vector v. Okay, um, And this is going to allow us at some point, if some of these sigmas are really, really small, we're going to be able to ignore them, to chop them off and approximate the matrix X only in terms of the few, first few dominant columns of U and columns of V and the first dominant singular value sigma. So I'll talk all about that later, um, but this is kind of an important concept is that these are ordered by importance. Ordered by importance. Uh, and that ordering carries with it the ordering of the, the columns of U and V as well. So in the case, of eigenfaces or of, of a, a data matrix X consisting of columns that are reshaped human faces. These column vectors of U have the exact same size as a vector X, and so these can be reshaped into faces as well. These can be, again, reshaped into these eigenfaces, and so on and so forth. Okay, so they have a clear interpretation. Uh, the entries of sigma are hi hierarchically organized. That has a clear interpretation. And these columns of V also have, have an interpretation. Um, this one is a little bit trickier to explain because it's V transpose, so I'm going to do my best here um, to, to say this in a way that's clear. Um, and actually, I'm going to start in the eigenflows case. So if our data was from a flow field evolving in time, then these would be eigenflows, hierarchically organized. Uh, the amount of energy that each of these column vectors captures of the flow would be given by these corresponding decreasing sigmas. And then V1 would be essentially the time series for how this first mode U1 evolves in this flow. So each of these snapshots has a certain amount of U1 in it, and the amount of, of how that mode varies in time is given by V. So these are kind of eigen... 
uh, time series in the case of physics, okay, these eigen time series. Uh, in the case of the human faces, you would basically take this V transpose, this big V transpose matrix, so now it's V1 transpose, V2 transpose, and so on and so forth. And essentially the first column of this V transpose matrix would tell me the mixture of all of those eigenfaces, the exact mixture that I have to take of all of those columns of U to add them up to equal X1. And the second column of this V transpose matrix would be the eigen mixture uh, of these columns that add up to X2 and so on and so forth. Of course, scaled by, by the singular value. So you can think of these as kind of mixtures uh, of U's to make X's, okay? So the first column makes X1, the second column makes X2, and so on and so forth. So very interpretable, uh, very kind of easy to understand. The columns of U have the same size as a column of X. So if these are people, these are eigenpeople. If these are flow fields, these are eigenflow fields. And they're hierarchically organized and arranged based on uh, these singular values, sigma. So the last things I want to tell you, uh, these are very, very easy to compute. So in MATLAB, you just say U S V equals S V D of X. Uh, I called this sigma S because I didn't want to type sigma, but that's U sigma V equals the S V D of X. It's just as easy in Python and R and almost every other language. Uh, it's also guaranteed to exist. That's really important. It's guaranteed to exist, uh, and it's also unique up to flipping the sign uh, of these vectors. I can make this negative u1 and this negative v1 and nothing changes, but up to that, uh, this is unique and it's guaranteed to exist. Okay, good. So we're going to talk in the next few videos about how you actually compute these matrices u, sigma, and v. Again, how we interpret u and v uh, as essentially eigenvectors of correlation matrices between the rows and columns of X. Uh, and then we are going to be able to use the singular value decomposition to approximate the data matrix X, to build models, uh, to do linear regression, principal components analysis. I could, for example, build models on these eigen time series if I have a physical system. We're going to talk about all of that soon. Thank you.